So welcome everyone to the Open Hearted Practice Group. It's February 27th, 2023. And the topic for today is feelings awareness. And I am Rob Eames, I'm based in Philadelphia. And Jim Mansky asked me to facilitate today while he and Jory are traveling. So I'm really honored to be here with you. And I am excited to see what we're gonna co-create here together. So let's just take a pause and settle in. And maybe the first thing is to do is, um, I have you all in gallery mode. So if you would um, maybe do the same and then just look around the room and look at all the faces in the room today. And just notice what sensations you have in your body as you look around at the people who have their video on and the names and the little boxes there. And by paying attention to the sensations in your body, it's the felt sense of what it feels like in your body. As you look around at the room of people here all gathered to explore nonviolent communication and ways to contribute to creating more compassion and intimacy and connection and interdependence and collaboration and peace and safety in the world. We're all here to do that right now. Notice what feelings you have in your body, the felt sense of the sensations, and notice the distinction between the felt sense and any thoughts you have about them. And so thoughts might be, I like this. I don't like this. Um, how much longer is this gonna last? Or uh, I wonder how I can sustain this. Or I wonder how I can change this. Those are thoughts. And if you notice thoughts, just bring your awareness back to the felt sense of what it feels like in your body. Okay. Nice. So let me introduce the topic for today. And one request before I do that, just so I, I see some new people joining, uh, two requests. One is that there will be uh, several activities in the time we're co-creating here together. And so if you would pl please put an equal sign in front of your name, if you don't wanna participate in the breakout rooms and that way, uh, it helps me not to put you in a breakout room. I still might make a mistake. And if I do, uh, please let me know and I'll, I'll fix it as quickly as possible as we get started. The other thing is to please stay muted unless you're talking. So there'll be plenty of time and opportunity for sharing in the group. And just to keep the background noise to a minimum, if you keep your, your microphone muted until you share. Great. So let me introduce the topic for today. Again, I'm Rob Eames for people who are just joining and we're gonna be talking about feelings awareness. And feelings awareness is really important in nonviolent communication. It's really fundamental, right? Because um, feelings is one of the fundamental messengers about what's going on for us and what our needs are. And so nonviolent communication proposes that bodily sensations are the messengers about what's important to me, about what's calling for my attention, about my needs. What's letting, my know, what, what's letting me know that my needs are being met. And so feelings awareness is a fundamental skill. And so what do we mean by feelings awareness? Let me propose one um, definition of feelings awareness, which is the non-judgmental noticing of the bodily sensations that are arising for me and allowing them and naming them. So what are the components of that? One is noticing the feelings in my body. So part of it is placing my awareness on what's going on in my body. The second thing is allowing them. So not suppressing them or diminishing them or trying to change them at all, but allowing them. And then naming them. Saying, what is this that's going on right now? So that's what we'll be exploring today. And the proposal of our time here together is that feelings awareness is a skill. It's something that can be practiced. It's something that can be developed. It's not something that we necessarily know how to do unless we practice it. And it's something that we get better at the more that I practice. The more I practice it, the more I get better at it. And why is that important? Because if feelings are messages about what's important to me, what needs are getting met and what needs are calling for my attention, then feelings awareness is a pretty fundamental skill. And getting better at it 
means I'm much more in tune with what's going on with me and can be much more in tune with what those messages are. I can notice them. I can bring my awareness to them. I can allow them so I can check them out and see what's what's going on for me. Is that making sense so far? Any questions about feelings, awareness, and what it is? Seeing some thumbs up, seeing some nodding heads. Thank you for that. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So before we go any further, so we're going to have some time for practicing feelings awareness. And my hope for today is that there'll be at least one practice that you take away from our time here together. And maybe something that you can take back into your practice at home um, as something that you can do to get more and more, more practice with, um, with uh, feelings awareness, the skill of feelings awareness. So let me do this. I'm going to give you an opportunity, one, to get to know each other a little bit in small groups and to give you some time to do a quick exercise. Now, it's only me here today, so let me put, uh, take a moment and put the breakout rooms together. And while I'm putting the breakout rooms together, let me see how many participants we have right now. Okay. Let me introduce what I'm going to ask you to do. So when I put you into breakout rooms, I'm going to ask you to um, introduce yourselves. So take about two minutes. So you'll have about 15 minutes in total. And to take about two minutes and introduce yourselves, what your name is, where you're dialing in from, uh, what brings you to the practice group today. And then to decide in your, you're gonna have a group of three, Decide who's going to be the first sharer, who's going to be the first listener, and who's the first observer. And then take turns switching off, sharer, listener, observer, and just go through the, the three of you. And with each round of sharing, listening, and observing, my request is that the sharer shares, what are you noticing in your body right now? How are you feeling? What needs are calling for your attention? And that could be needs calling for your attention, either to let you know that they're being met right now or that they're calling for your attention, um, that they need attention. And then what's a request that you can make of yourself or someone else in this moment to that might contribute to those needs, okay? So two minutes of introducing yourselves and deciding who's gonna be listener first, who's gonna be, I'm sorry, who's gonna be sharer first, who's gonna be listener first, Who's going to be observer? And then when you're the listener, what are you feeling right now? What needs are calling for your attention? And what's a request that you can make of yourself or someone else that would contribute to your needs? It would really help me to make sure that I was clear if someone could say back to me what the instructions are. Would someone be willing to do that? Uh, Rob, this is Narsi. I, Narsi. I have, yeah, I live from India. So mm -hmm. I, I think I may be wrong, but I heard two things. One is as I'm sharing, I need to share my feelings and what's what needs of mine. And the second instruction I heard was that, you know, as a listener, I must be sharing uh, what I what was going on when I'm listening to the other part. Is that right? Or am I getting confused here? Oh, I'm so glad you said that, Narsi, because I think I was unclear. So when you're the listener, and I don't think I said this at all, so so... I'm so glad to hear back from you. So when you're the listener, if you could just reflect back what you heard the oh. sharer say. So oh, okay. I heard you Bye. say that you're feeling this, that these needs are alive for you, and that your request is this. Did I get it? And then always end on a, um, it's always best to end on a clear and present request. And so did, did I get that right? Is there anything more you'd like for me to share? Is there Thank anything you. more Thank that you'd like to share? Yeah. You, reflect back. You. Thank you, Narcy. Appreciate yeah. it. Awesome. So let me put the finishing touches on putting you all into breakouts. And it will just take me another minute or two. Uh, ask for your patience while I do that. So. so I have a question. So what's the observer's job? Oh, great. And I couldn't see who's sharing. Who is that? Oh, it's Mary. Oh, hi, Mary. Yeah, the observer's job is just to observe, just to be uh, a warm uh, uh, presence um, observing. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Thank you for asking that, Mary. Thanks. Does the observer have to share what he or she observes or just observe and assimilate for himself or herself? But do they have to share what they've observed when the sharer was sharing? That's um, the listener's job, right? 
that's the listener's job. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think in the in the um, for simplicity and for time, uh, let's just let the listener do that. Um, and um, you'll each have about let's see, two minutes to greet and logistics, and then you'll each have four minutes after that. Okay, so I'll let you know when it's time to switch throughout the the. And OK, so we're going to have one group, it looks like a four, the way it comes out. OK, so we're going to have one group of four. And so let me do that. So you're going to see a prompt to go into a breakout room. And thanks for being patient for me as I created the breakout rooms. Now that we have this, you're going to stay in the same breakouts throughout all the activities, so it'll be quicker as we move forward. So you'll see a message to, to join a breakout room. And here we go. I'll let you know as, as it's time to switch roles. Okay. Enjoy. Okay. I hope we aren't the group of four. <laughs> Hello. Um, Hello. Can you can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, oh. good. So I'm not in a breakout room, but um, Rob, before you put me in one, I want you to be aware that actually I have my partner, Don, was unable to log in with us. He's a, he's a regular participant, but tonight he can't get on Zoom. So he's on my phone right now. So. Oh, OK. And what, what do you, are, are you, are you proposing? I'm just going to we're just, we're just, well, I mean, I, I thought I was going in a breakout room, but I guess I'm not. <laughs> but it, it, said, it says that you were invited to room two. Did you not get the message? I did. And oh, here's where it says join. Normally, it oh, automatically takes me there. I, I, I okay. I'll... Have a good time. <laughs> yeah, Rob, this is Josephine. I'm on the phone and I'm, uh, do I get to go into a breakout room or how's that going to work? Oh, sorry, I, I missed you. And so let me put you in a breakout room. Let's see if I can, let me see. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Let's see what I can do here. You know, I am very sorry. I cannot figure out how to put you in a breakout room. So, um, oh, no, I, I just did. Here you go. Sorry about that. Um, okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome.
Hi, Rob. Is there a way I could join a group? Oh, hi, Pooja. Um, I, sorry, I joined late. I may have missed the question. And <laughs> yeah, I think all the groups have been assigned. I'm very sorry because um, okay. uh, even one of them has um, four. Um, so, That's fine. Um, That's fine. yeah, let me let me see what I can do and adjust the groups for the subsequent activities. Sure. That's fine. But for now, the invitation is even with your, uh, with yourself to check in, how are you feeling right now in this moment? Mm -hmm. uh, and what are the feelings pointing to in terms of needs that are mm -hmm. alive for you? Mm -hmm. And what's a request that you can make of yourself or someone else that would contribute to those needs? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks Pooja. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Roxana. People in breakout breakout rooms.
So I, I'm sorry, I, <laughs> I have problem with my, um, because I'm using my iPhone. So I can't use my video for some reason. It doesn't work. Welcome, glad you can make it. I'm sorry. I said welcome. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone. So I just joined here. So is there any anything I have to know? The topic for tonight is feelings awareness. And um, people are in breakout rooms right now doing an activity. They'll come back and then they'll have about another five or six minutes. And so then we'll get, then we'll get started with the, the main content for today. So that's where we are, Roxana. Okay, thank you. And what's the activity that they are doing at this time? They're checking in, introducing each other and they're sharing what feelings are alive for them, um, what needs the feelings are pointing to and a request for themselves or another person that would contribute to those needs. So they're going around and share. Oh, okay. So you want to say something now <laughs> about your, uh, what is alive in you right now? <laughs> oh, that's very generous, Roxana, but I, I, I need to manage the, the activity in just a second. So um, pardon me for that. I, I would, that's very generous of you to offer. <laughs> oh, thank you, okay. You're welcome. <laughs> Welcome back, welcome back. And seeing people joining back, I think we almost have everyone, let's see. And I wanna start by, oh, here we go. I wanna start by apologies. I made a mistake with the time, and so I apologize. So I, I in my haste to put people into breakout rooms, um, I only gave you 10 minutes. And so what I plan to do, unless there's any objections, is to put you back into those same breakout rooms for about six minutes. So you can finish, and I'm, I'm, I apologize for that. Does that sound good? Any objections to that? Okay, I'm seeing thumbs up and nodding. Okay, so I'll put you back into the breakout rooms for an additional six minutes, and just to finish off with the people who weren't able to share, um, and you'll see a, a request to join again. See you in six minutes. <laughs>
Welcome back. Welcome back. <clears throat> so since we started, we had a few more people join. So let me just uh, recap what we've been up to, to so we're all at the same place, that we just spent a little bit of time introducing ourselves in breakout rooms and going around and sh each person got a chance to share and be heard about what are you feeling? What am I feeling right now? What are those feelings pointing to in terms of what's important to me or what needs are alive for me? And what's a request that I can make of myself or someone else that may contribute to those needs? Okay, so that's what we've been doing. So I'd like to hear from a few of you about what that was like. And so maybe let's hear from one person about what was it like to share in the group about your feelings and your needs and a potential request? What did it feel like? What did you notice in your body after you shared and heard the reflection back from the listener? Just raise your physical hand or your um, virtual hand if you'd like to share. Hmm, I see Seth's hand. Seth. Uh, yeah, I felt it, it, there was a, yeah, I felt an opening and there, there was sort of, it was anxiety was the predominant sort of feeling and at times in the stomach and I felt that sort of start to dissipate and uh, yeah, there's like some questions and these after sharing and hearing some reflection back. Mm. Mm, mm. So Thank you for sharing, Seth. So um, I, what I heard you say is that there was some change in the anxiety that you were feeling, some, some diminishing of the anxiety after sharing, and that you noticed an opening. And I'm imagining that an opening would be some sort of feeling of, of expansion or openness in your body. Is that right? Yeah, thanks for sharing. So yeah, in, the, in the chest, it was like, yeah, it was sort of an opening in the chest, yeah. Mm. Opening, yeah. So that was Seth's experience with uh, sharing what he's feeling, what the feelings are pointing to, and a request. For someone who was a, a, a listener, what was your experience listening to someone share those things? What did you notice in your body as you listened? Amalia. Hello, everyone. Let me put my video. Sorry, I put my camera down because I'm sitting in a comfortable position. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually one of the the colleagues I I did listen to, and somehow I was able to really be present, which was my surprise because lately my mind goes like crazy. So I don't know the tone of the voice, the whatever the person shared was made me feel made me feel his emotion in and was very pleasant, even a bit sad, but very pleasant. So I'm not sure of the impact, but for me, it was a good thing. I, I feel good. I, uh, I feel empathic. So and that's a good, good feeling. Thank you. Thank you, Amalia. And so what I heard you say was that there were some pleasant feelings that arose for you in your body as you listened to the other person. And also that you noticed in checking in with yourself that you noticed that you were present to what uh, the other person was saying. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you for the <laughs> appreciation. Yeah. And AJ, I see your hand up. Yeah. And uh, I, I really felt nice sharing. I'm new to this kind of environment where uh, we have a community of people who uh, bring with them a presence that is so easy, that is so compassionate, empathetic. And I felt lovely sharing it with uh, Amelia. I mean, the way she reflected upon what I said, I could feel she, she remembered every word. I was just speaking extemporary and I also found it easy to share this time 
uh, because in the previous session also I was trying to share as to what I'm feeling in the body and I always confuse myself is it actually what I'm feeling or is it something that I want to feel and all that but this time I just let go and this just shared impromptu what was coming and I was surprised by the way Amelia assimilated and shared everything back uh, to the word and uh, thank you so much for this experience rob it was it was a good very very uh, i mean i don't know was it energizing or calming i feel so good after this exercise so thank you so much for this exercise <laughs> maybe calming and energizing is uh, yes. a wonderful combination aj thank you for sharing that and and um thank you i think what aj and and um amaya and seth are pointing to and where I want to segue into is that feelings awareness is something that happens moment to moment as we're living our lives, as we're engaged in any activity alone or with other people, including this kind of sharing. And, if, and in this kind of sharing where we're sharing our deepest truths, our most intimate aspects of our lives, the, you know, what's going on with me, what's important to me, what I can do or ask of someone else to be part of my life that checking in with what does it feel like and pointers to oh that's what intimacy feels like that's what connection feels like that's what interdependence feels like and what I'm saying is those are the feelings that are associated with those needs being met that's what it that's what it feels like when my need for understanding is being contributed to that's what it feels like when my need to matter all these fundamental uh, needs that are so enlivening. So let's open it up to the topic uh, uh, of exploring the topic even further today, which is feelings awareness. So nonviolent communication, feelings is an important foundation. Feelings is, is one of the fundamental parts of being human that points to what's most important to me right now? What am I needing? What's alive for me right now? And so, it should be, sounds simple, right? I pay attention to my feelings. And then based upon my feelings, I connect those two needs that are alive for me. What's your experience? Is it that simple? Who would like to share? What, 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 what is behind the scenes in terms of how you go about doing this? And what might make it challenging of just feelings? And then what are the needs underlying this feeling? What's your experience with that? Would like to share just raise your physical or virtual hand i see sally and then Merritt. so what's it like for you sally um i've been practicing nvc for quite some time and i'm finding that in my workplace when i'm getting triggered um, by what i perceive is rudeness from my students um it is really difficult. <laughs> it's really difficult to really look towards their needs and not make a judgment of the behavior that's happening. And then also to take care of myself because really that's what I wanna do first. And I am supposed to be guiding these students so I'm often outwardly focused even though I get I get the feelings of getting overwhelmed or triggered by the situation or by the interactions. I don't often feel like I have time to take care of myself because I'm my job is to be taking care out there according to you know the school. Um, so remembering that I need to take care of myself and just take, even if it's just one breath, oh, wow, that, really upset me and I'm I'm having some anger and anger is pointing me to having a judgment that what they're doing is wrong and instead and then holding that and and feeling that in if I can in that nano minute and then centering myself so that I could have um a helpful and appropriate uh reaction or uh connection with the student in that moment that's where it really tests the skills that I know on paper. And then I can easily go through, oh, yes, I have a feeling and then a need and then a request. But timing, 
and triggers make that all so much more challenging. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. And and you shared so much that's so rich. Um, so I'm going to ask Mary and Siva just to, um, if you would uh, just hold for a second and I'll get right to you. But I want to underscore some of the things. Thanks, Mary. I just want to underscore some of the things I heard uh, Sally say that what, you know, um, you know, those of us who drive cars, we have a dashboard on the car and a light goes on that has a little, you know, oil can. And we think, ah, oh, the oil needs changing. A light goes on that has a picture of a tire. Oh, one of my tires needs to be inflated, right? If only being human was so, was so straightforward, like a dashboard on a car where the lights actually point to something. Feelings are not like that. Can you imagine driving a car and something pokes you and you're supposed to know or, or something, you know, creates some sort of uh, motion or or burning sensation or temperature, and you're supposed to know that that means that the the wheel needs the the tire needs to, to be inflated. You know, while you're trying to so you're trying to drive the car, and if that was the message of the car, it'd be much more you know. And every time it was different in terms of what the feelings are. Um, so to Sally's points, it's much more complicated. These feelings things sometimes they can be overwhelming, and by overwhelming that means they they can take up lots of space and they can be distracting and they can be uncomfortable. And so not so simple when I'm overwhelmed to go from feeling overwhelmed to, uh, oh, let me just allow this feeling and let me uh, be curious about what it means and let me get to a request. Um, and so we'll say more about this as we go forward, but this is where the skill of feelings awareness is so powerful because just like any skill, the more I practice it, the more facility I get. And the more facility means that I notice the feelings quicker when they're at a low level of intensity. And so I can be, I can be aware of them when they're at a low level before they become overwhelming. And I can be present to them moment to moment. So sometimes what happens is the volume of feelings may get turned up in me because I don't notice them until the volume gets turned up, right? The other thing that the practice can, can do is allow me to get more self-understanding about what are the things that are really stimulating to me? You know, what are the kinds of experiences that are really stimulating to me? And then have some self-empathy about those and self-understanding about what those stimulating feelings are. The other thing that Sally pointed to is that when those feelings arise, those uncomfortable emotional feelings, is, um, is it may take time and energy and focus to attend to them. At the same time, I might be in a moment to moment engagement with someone else in interaction. So how do I do that? And so that's another part of having feelings awareness as a practice is that by practicing feelings awareness, I become much quicker at toggling my awareness between what's going on with me, giving myself some self-empathy and then going back to the other person. It can be, I think you, Sally used the term nano, nano minutes. It can be in nanoseconds where I can, I can get better and better noticing self-empathy, self-soothing, getting back into the, into the interaction. And one of the tips that we're gonna see moving forward is that it helps to practice feelings awareness offline. The time to practice uh, my, my new tennis serve isn't on the court, uh, on center court, right? <laughs> the time to practice my, uh, my language skills, you know, uh, my my new foreign language skills may not be with someone who is is talking very very fast. So more graduated practice offline. Okay, so thank you for that, Sally. And Mary, I'd like to hear from you. What what makes this feelings awareness and translating into needs and requests? What makes it uh, uh, complicated or challenging, Mary? Uh, today I just experienced something uh, very pleasant. I notice uh, the feeling awareness of positive feelings is so important. When you started to give us instruction, I was thinking I don't have any feelings right now. So before I would say, if I don't have any negative feelings, I said to myself, I don't have any feelings. So I thought feelings, are just the feelings awareness. It's just the, about negative feelings. But in the small group, when my small group, the first listener 
Uh, the first sharer shared some pleasant feeling uh, of content. Uh, and that I, I was the listener. I get that feeling from her. It makes me feel so good. And then when it gets to my turn to share, I actually digged out some very good feelings, the presence. I was feeling uh, grateful and joyful. And then the needs, the second time when we went back, she asked me a very good question. What needs fulfilled, Mary? You, for your feelings, then I said, oh yeah, it's the meaning, the love, the purpose of my life. The whole process really gives me such a good feeling. <laughs> and uh, thank you, it's a good learning that for me, I will not be only, I will not only pay attention to negative feelings anymore, I just, I should pay attention to the positive feelings too. Mm, Mary, thank you for sharing such an important, rich um, points that you're making there. So I just want to underscore a couple of them that um, we have this, as humans, we have a built-in negativity bias. You know, we're looking for, it's part of our, our wiring and it can be changed, you know, it can be changed with practice. So just like you're saying, the practice of feelings awareness, noticing and savoring what's what what's positive feelings are arising in me. And actually you're pointing to one of the practices that we're gonna to go today is gonna to be focused on that. Um, so the more I practice noticing when positive feelings, not forcing them, not, meant, not necessarily, you know, uh, making them happen, but just being attuned to them. And then like you're saying, well, the, the natural next question is to savor what needs are being met. Um, and the second thing is to support each other in that as well. And one of the ways that we can do that is to, um, when someone is sharing uh, about something that's, that's, that's happening for them, that one of the misconceptions of nonviolent communication is that empathy it, empathy for the other, one of the modes of nonviolent communication, is only to be present for another person's upset. But it's equally empathy for the other to be present for their celebration, for their joy, for their contentment, yes. for their ease, yes. uh, right? And so both of those things are, I wanted to underscore there, Mary, thank you for that. Yeah, thank you. It's a, yeah, it's a rich, um, it's, it's rich being a human and complicated and it has many different things. Um, so um, do you feel complete, Thank you. Mary? It's a, it's a great practice of connection to myself, the presence, and also a great practice connecting to others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and noticing that uh, needs met for, needs contributed for, Connection, interdependence, community, understanding, to matter, support, they feel good. And that's part of what we're co-creating here together as a, as a community. Um, so thank you for that. Siva, I, I saw your hand up. Do you still have something you want to share or? No, okay, all right, thank you for that. So let me just say, we're gonna go into a next activity and I wanna introduce that. But before I do, we've had a few people join the group um, recently. And so I will create new um, breakouts for people who just joined. So let me give you an opportunity before we do this next activity. If you just joined and you don't wish to be in a breakout room, please put an equal sign in front of your name. So I will add you to a new breakout room if you just joined, unless you do that. So that would help me if you put equals in front of your, your name. So thank you for that. If you don't wanna be in a breakout room. So, Here's the next practice of feelings awareness. So I'm gonna put you back into your breakout rooms. You're gonna be in groups of mostly three. There might be one or two groups with groups of four. And the invitation is to imagine what it feels like in your body when you feel confident, okay? The invitation is imagine what it feels like in your body to feel confident. And let me give you a couple options for how you do this because I've done this in many times with, with, with groups and we're all different, right? So 
for some people I've heard that they can just imagine what does it feel like to feel confident and they can get into that bodily sensation of what it feels like to be confident. For others, it helps to recall a recent experience in which you felt confidence. And so what that might be is to imagine a recent experience where you were, who you were with, what happened, what was said, what the room looked like, what you were wearing, all those details, and just play it back in your mind. You know, press rewind, press, you know, press replay um, until you notice the, uh, the recollection creating the feelings of confidence in this moment right now, okay? Now, let me give you another option. Confidence can be a, a feeling that some people have some mixed um, experiences with. And so if confidence isn't something that you're up for or that you can, you know, that you're feeling like you, you, you can uh, um, arise in this moment, how about calm? Okay, calm will be another option. So if confidence isn't speaking to you in, in, this, in this time, then what does it feel like in your body to feel calm? Okay, so one really important thing for this activity is to distinguish between the felt sense of feeling confident, or if you choose calm, the felt sense of what it feels like in your body. So the felt sense is where is it in my body? Is it in my chest? Is it in my shoulders? Is it in my forehead? Is it in my neck? Is it in my face? My limbs? Uh, you know, my torso? Where is it? And these feelings, I'm going to use words, but the feelings of these things, an energy, a tingle, a temperature, a movement, um, a pressure, a constriction, right? Those are the words. I'm not talking about the words. I'm using the words to point to the felt sense of what it feels like, okay? And to distinguish that from thoughts about the, the feelings. Thoughts about the feelings are things like, ooh, I like this. Ooh, I wish this would be the way I felt all the time. Oh, I wonder if this will go away. Um, I wonder how I can get more confidence in my life. I wonder why I don't feel this more often. Those are all thoughts, right? When you notice your awareness going to the thoughts for this activity, just bring it back to what does it feel like in your body, okay? So two options. What does it feel like to feel confident in your body? Or what does it like to feel calm in your body? Just pick, pick which one. In your groups, same as before, say hello to each other when you go in your breakout rooms again and you'll have 15 minutes again. So decide who's gonna be the sharer first, who's gonna be the listener, and then who's gonna be the observer. If you're in a group of four, you'll have two observers, okay? The sharer will describe, after they manifest you know, uh, confidence or calm in their body, they'll describe, here's what it feels like to feel confident, or here's what it feels like to feel calm. And you'll use words to point to what it feels like in your body. When you're the listener, once the sharer has shared what it feels like the first round and they pause, ask them, um, please tell me more about what it feels like to feel confident in your body or feels like calm. So give them another prompt to share a little bit more, give them a little bit more time. And then the, the, the sharer can share again, here's what it feels like to feel confident in my, in my body or calm in my body. After that feels complete, um, the listener will just reflect back what they heard the sharer say, and then you switch roles. So someone else becomes the listener, someone else becomes the sharer, and then the others become the observers, okay? Would someone say back to me what the instructions are for the activity before I put you into a breakout room? And really help me to make sure I was clear. Can I try? Yeah, Mary. Yeah. Uh we're going to be uh, share two feelings. One is confidence. One is about car. Um, we want to share where is it in my body when we feel confidence or calm. Where does the body shows? And uh, um, so the listener can reflect what. Uh, what just the sharer shared 
and also ask a question, another level, a deeper level. Ask the sharer, how do you feel? Where is it in your body when you feel confidence? So it's to go deeper. Yes, yeah, exactly. And the only clarification is that I heard you say that we'll do two feelings. And the no, invitation is to or. do either yeah. or. Yeah, either yeah. or. So so the list, the sharer gets to decide if they want to share about what it feels to feel confident or calm. It's your personal or, preference yeah. as, as, as to which one. So at the end of, of the, the when everyone has had a chance to share and listen and observe, any time that you have left as a group, just use that time to talk about what was it like to manifest that feeling and remember what it feels like in your body. What was it like for you? What was it like to hear someone else describe what it feels like to feel calm or confident? So use the extra time in that way. So great. So I'm just going to take another, thank you, Mary, for that. It was really helpful. I'm just going to take another minute or 30 seconds, hopefully, to put the people who are not in a breakout room already into a breakout room. And so let me put um, the new people in there in a breakout room. And here we go. You're going to see an invitation to join a breakout room. Have fun. I'm not sure how I came back to the main room. Oh, let me see. I click join, join the breakout room, but uh, it just yeah. came back to the main room. Let's see. Um, hmm. I also don't have a breakout room to go to. Oh, okay. Thank you, Sarah. I'll put you in one. Um, So AJ, the, the challenge I'm having right now is it won't let me put you back into the breakout room that you were in before. And uh, let's see. Oh, <laughs> that worked.
Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> Wonderful. Good to see you again. <clears throat> Welcome back. Thanks for coming back into the main meeting room. <laughs> and it looks like we have everybody back here again. And Monica, I see your hand up. Yes. So I'm a teacher and I was just sharing about an experience that I had where I had a class that was really challenging and I couldn't teach that class like I taught my other classes. So I you know, met with a colleague and we came up with a strategy and I put my 100% attention on them. And I don't really, I mean, I, I know I was focused and all my attention was on them and it worked out really well, but I have no idea how to figure out what the heck was going on in my body. So I am needing help. I can't even think, I don't know. <laughs> because while my attention was focused on them, wanting to learn, wanting, you know, for them to be happy, for them to be engaged. So I have no idea what's going on in me. So I need help. <laughs> Please. Okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, thank you for sharing that. So let me say it back to everyone and, and to you and make sure I got it right that in your experience of this activity, what became uh, clear to you was that your awareness and focus was on other, other people and you found it challenging to, to focus on what, it, what does it feel like to be you and your body? Is that right? Yeah, I have no idea because all my attention was on them. And even just thinking about it, I can't even figure out because I was just so focused on them wanting to have fun, wanting to the, them to learn, them actually choosing to want to learn. And so I have no idea because my attention was on them. I don't know anything that was going on with me other than I was just focused on them. Mm -hmm. You know, um, based on what you're saying, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. Although just to, to, just to give you some some um, feedback that I, my work is with um, individuals and couples um, uh, about their romantic relationships. That's what I do. Um, and so it's not uncommon in my experience that uh, people that I work with will report that they don't have a lot of uh, awareness of what's going on in their body. So I wanna let you know that you're not alone. And the thing I recommend for them is to start simple, simpler, or, you know, so, you know, it's just like learning any skill that it's a, it's a graduated practice. And so starting where you are. And so what I would recommend is maybe starting with a scenario, like the one you imagine in your class, there's a lot to, there's a lot going on there. There's, there's the students, there's the interactions with the students, there's, you know, your preparation and planning. There's a lot of things. And so a simpler one would be starting with something that's not a scenario at all. And so that would be resting on, so one example, the practice of resting your awareness on one part of your body. And, and it helps sometimes to start with a, a part of your body that has a lot of sense, sense um, uh, sensory, um, uh, what's the word, <laughs> sensation. Um, and so like your cheeks or the uh, palms of your hands, just you know, sit with your palms up. And for five minutes, rest your awareness on one of those areas. Like the, you know, it can be a, a size on my right cheek, like here, and just, what does it feel like in my cheek right now for five minutes? Set a timer, start and end, rest your awareness on your cheek. Rest your awareness next time on the palms of your hands. Rest your awareness on what does it feel like for your soles of your feet to rest on the, the floor. And just take five minutes to do that. And that might be the starting point for, you know, building a skill and resting awareness on your body because there's not all those other things going on like other people and interactions and things like that. So Monica, does that sound like um, something that might be useful? Um, yeah, I can try it. I can, I know when I'm stressed because I get a headache and my neck is tight, but that's all I can tell you, but I'll work on the other one. So thank you for the suggestion. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds good. Um, and Siva and then Beth, Siva. I just wanted to ask, uh, when Jim and Jory are doing this, there's an after party and I, I uh, wanted to talk to Sudha in the after party. So, are oh, you, thanks you. 
Thank you for raising that. Yeah, there, there's not going to be an after party today, unfortunately, because um, uh, I'm in a different time zone. And so it's getting pretty late where I am. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know. I understand. Yeah. So for... uh, uh, can you put me in a room with Sudha if we if we have another room? Another. Oh, um, I'll, I will try. I will try, okay. Siva. Yeah. Because we will have at least one more activity before we close okay. for tonight. Thanks for that. And Beth, I see your hand. Thank you. Um, well, I there was a um, woman in our group who is a special ed teacher, and she was about to share one of her um, techniques that she uses with her students. And I'm I just was wondering if she would like to to share with the group because it sounded like an interesting activity. Thanks, Beth. Yeah, let's see if she'd like to share. Who was that? No pressure if you don't want to share. But if you would, it sounds like there would be potential rich sharing for the group. Okay, maybe not. Better. I don't I don't want to put someone on the spot. So <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it was very good. We were cut off before she went through the whole thing. Okay. okay. Perhaps another time. Okay. So would anyone else like to share? What was that? What was that like for you? What was it like to imagine what it feels like to be confident or calm? And what does confidence and calm, where, where do you feel it in your body? Just raise your physical or your virtual hand. So we all have these feelings as humans. It's so interesting. Sarah, I see your hand. Um, I definitely feel it in my stomach, the, the calm and the confidence. But um, for me, the calm um, and the confidence came together. So I was wondering if they're always together or just in this moment. <laughs> a calm confidence. <laughs> and would you mind if I, if I go a little deeper there, Sarah? So you feel it in your stomach. What, what, is, what, is, what does it feel like? Would you put it into words? Um, well, no, maybe, maybe that's a wrong thing to say. The calm felt, I felt it in my stomach. I felt a little bit of like, a little bit of excitement, like energy in my stomach. Mm, energy. I think the calm part was the absence of stress. Like the confidence kind of took over my stress <laughs> or made the stress go away. I don't know. Um, the kind of low grade stress that I have, like, almost all the time lately, because I'm having a stressful time right now. Yeah. Mm, mm. So let me say it back to you, make sure I got it right and check it out with you. So confidence feels like, felt like it feels like an energy in your stomach region and calm, you notice is an absence of the tension that you notice in stress. So it's an absence of that. So maybe more of an, an ease or a relaxation would be another way to say it, right? Oh, man, thanks for sharing that. Awesome. Okay. So, and for other people, it might be different in terms of what does it feel to feel confident? Um, and so this is a fun thing to, to, to play around with and to share. Allison, I see your hand. Oh, you're muted, Allison. Thank you. Uh, I, in this last session, was um, the sharer and these two elements of confidence and calm are big, big things in my world and my life. And I had, was in this group with two people that just, to me, that experience is one of those, how beautiful and how wonderful and how rich and how nurturing and deeply connective and satisfying and joyful. I mean, this two people with coming in with a heartfulness that was is just naturally NVC to me. I mean, that one person has not been formally involved with NVC, but it, it they were already there and to be to have this container 
where we come together and share this longing and aspiration and, and act it out. We get to act this out. Oh, it really just, it doesn't get much better than that. For me, it's just, so thank you to all of you because this is the container. This is the magic place to come for me where it's, it's a safe place and a, a place of compassion and joy and honesty. Mm, awesome. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing your experience. And what we all got to witness there is savoring. You know, I, I heard Allison savoring these needs met and the feelings of needs met and those good, good feelings of something precious of, of mm -hmm. being in, in, in community and being heard in presence of other human beings um, uh, uh, to matter. Uh, yeah. Um, so we have maybe time for one more. So AJ, and then we'll go into the next activity. So AJ. All right, again, uh, Rob, thank you so much for this exercise. Um, I, was, I was surprised as how uh, participatedly I could listen uh, to the person in a group who was sharing and we were again fortunately uh, or when we con coincidentally in the same group and given the situation that I'm currently in I have felt it difficult to pay attention when somebody is talking so I have to focus myself because I get easily distracted with what is going around in my world right now in my personal work but it was beautiful and I thank you so much for giving two options, confidence and calm, because it, 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 it played out in our breakout room. The person started attempting to feel what they would feel when they are confident. And I was the listener. I could feel tension and a different state. So I invited the person to feel, to express what, she might feel when she feels calm and the change, the shift happened in like seconds. Uh, so I could see how the, her, her state changed when she tried to feel calm. And the beauty is that I realized that hey, she appears very confident when she is feeling calm. And so the takeaway for me was one that, hey, I can pay attention in spite of everything that's going on, one. And second, I really felt that if I, if the other person could change their state, their feeling, this, their, their being, by thinking of an emotion that they could connect to easier, when they shifted from confidence to come, I can do the same. I can practice this with myself to change my being, my feeling, my the, the presence that I feel. Uh, so thanks again, Rob. Beautiful mm -hmm. activity. You're very welcome. So I heard you say that that it was a, a reminder that you could be present for another person and focus attention on, on them, despite what's going on for you in your life right now. And also some really important thing that calm, confidence, there is something powerful about being able to recall recent experiences that would remind us of what it feels like and remind me of what it feels like in my body to connect to this is what it feels like to be calm. This is what it feels like to be confident. It can have a really um, soothing effect that we, that I have the, the choice to, to, to remember those things and recall them and recall what those bodily states uh, feel like. Mm -hmm. So thank you for, for those reminders. Um, so, a couple, a couple of things just to mention uh, before we go into this next activity. So I'm going to give you another opportunity to practice, and that will be uh, the last activity that we do for for tonight, um, at least in U.S. Eastern time tonight. Um, that um, the different, you know, I keep bringing up the the importance of resting awareness on the felt sense, and why is that such an important factor um, in contrast to thoughts about it. And I just want to highlight a couple of things that as humans, we have this wonderful faculty 
of awareness. You know, awareness can be a pinpoint or it can be very broad or anything in between. We can focus, I can focus my awareness on my whole body. I can focus awareness on a very small point on my fingertip. Um, I can focus my awareness on my thoughts, uh, for example. Um, so I can place my awareness, I can focus, focus my awareness on another person and what they look like or what they're saying to me. And the more I practice these skills of where to put my awareness, and when I notice my awareness to someone else, somewhere else to bring it back, that practice will allow me greater facility when I'm in moment-to-moment -moment interactions. And so part of the, the practice of being in a practice group or doing this on your own when you're not in a moment-to-moment -moment interaction with someone else is the more repetitions, the more skill, the more you can bring that into those interactions and quickly, <laughs> what's going on in me? What's going on in the other person? What's going on in me? Now that they said that, what's going on in the room? What's going on in the person? What are they saying? Now, uh, what's going on? What are the thoughts that I'm noticing about what they're saying, right? So one thing is that I have, I'll have i have greater facility the more I practice that. And any real-time interaction with other people involves shifting awareness between different parts of the interaction. Um, and importantly, to remember to bring my awareness into what's happening to me, right? The second thing is that there's a, a dynamic between thoughts and feelings. So what happens when I have thoughts like, I don't want this, or I shouldn't be feeling this way, or this is too overwhelming for me? There's an interaction between thoughts and feelings. And so part of the practice when I'm offline and doing this on my own or as part of a practice group like this, just noticing what happens when I just rest my awareness on only the felt sense in my body and distinguish that from any thoughts about it. And when I notice any thoughts, bring it back to the felt sense in my body. Oh, some of the, my experiences, I can tolerate some challenging feelings. When I add to it, the thoughts about, um, I can't tolerate this, or I wish this would end, or this is too much for me, this is too painful, or um, I shouldn't be feeling this way. That can change the feelings, and can sometimes intensify the feelings, right? So the thoughts have an important interplay with the with the, the feelings. And just getting proficient in that interplay and getting proficient at noticing the thoughts and resting back on the bodily sensations is an important skill. So with that being said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask you to do one more activity in the same um, breakout rooms, uh, same breakout groups, which is now, so in the last one, Confidence and calm, those are words that we use to describe bodily states when needs are being met, right? Confidence might be an indication that my need for competence is being met or my need for preparation or, or um, uh, uh, I, I lost my train of thought, but um, you know, so those are, are feelings that are indicators when needs are being met. Now I'm gonna ask you to do uh, one of a feeling where it points to needs that are alive that are calling for attention. And so recall a recent time when you felt impatience. Okay, recall a recent time when you felt impatience. So go back in your memory and imagine a recent time and imagine it in great detail, much, as much detail as you can to manifest um, the feelings of impatience in this moment right now. And that most likely because you're recalling it, they're gonna be muted. The other thing is when you're selecting a recent experience, select something on the scale of you know, zero, which is you didn't feel much of anything at all, to 10, which is, hey, I'm so impatient, I can't tolerate this, somewhere on the low end of the scale, three, four, you know, two, three, four, right? Not the end of the world. This is the practice, right? So something not that in intense. So recall a situation when you're feeling impatience, and then decide who's going to be the listener, who's going to be the sharer, who's going to be the observer. Uh, if you're the sharer, describe where does impatience where is it uh, felt? Where do you feel it in your body? And what does it feel like as best as you can put it into words? When you're the listener, reflect back what you heard and offer a question to the sharer to go a little bit deeper. Could you tell me a little bit more about what it feels like to feel impatience in your body? Okay. And then switch roles just as we did before. So what I'm going to do is uh, put you back into breakout rooms for 15 more minutes to give you some time to explore that together. Then I'll bring you back into the main meeting room and we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, next steps in closure, okay?
So any questions about the activity before I put you back into breakout rooms? All right, so here you go. <clears throat> Enjoy. Rob, is it possible to put uh, Shiva and me in one Shiva and me in one room? Oh, can okay. you add add a room? Well, one second. Um, I think Shiva wants to say something. Uh, yeah, just let me have one second because Shiva, yeah. because you didn't. Um, I need to move some people here. I, Let's I, see. I abandoned Seth. I didn't want to do that, but yeah, let me um, let me take care of some people who are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll put you in a room now. So, so oh, there was no one. This is Roxana. There was no one in the room. Just myself. Okay. Put her with Seth. Um, He's a great um, partner. Sorry, I'm having a little challenge right now. Seth um, is in room nine. Um, let's see here. Uh, and David oh, oh. doesn't have a partner. Okay, Roxanne, I'm going to move you. Okay, well, okay. Here you go. You'll see an invitation. Did you see it? No, I haven't yet. N no? Oh. Hmm. It, yeah, I've, I put you in a room. The other room you sent me, no one was there. That's why I came there. Okay, let me try again. How about goes, David you. K? Yes, I was with him in that room. Let me try again, Roxana. Oh, hi, David. I see you're back. Oh. Hmm. David, just let me know if you'd like to be placed in a, in a room. So, still I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I'm having a hard time sorting out why you're not in a room. Um, okay, I'll try again. There you go, Roxanne. <laughs> you're not getting an invitation? No. <laughs> oh, I don't know what to do. It, it says okay. you did. You know what? I leave for now uh, because. So. Okay. I... Okay. I'm sorry it didn't work out, Roxanne. It's okay. Thank <laughs> you. Have a good one.
Welcome back, everyone. So you got um, some opportunities to practice and to be with others practicing. What does it feel like in my body to feel impatience? And that brings our time together almost to a close. And so let me just wrap up a little bit and offer some next steps and some resources here that my offering today was to uh, share some practices for how to practice feelings awareness, that feelings awareness is a skill and that we can, that I can get better at it the more practice that I have. Now, these are only two of, uh, actually one with two variations uh, of a, a practice. Um, there are many other practices for feelings awareness. And so these are things that you can do in a practice group like this. And they are things that you can do on your own. Now, what are some of the, the advantages of practice? One is to do it offline. So we're in your, when you're in moment to moment with other people, there's some demands, as many of you shared, there's some demands, it can be very stimulating, it can be really distracting. And so building the skill offline, which means in a quiet place, on your own, in a practice group like this, which is a safe container, those demands are not there. And so you can focus on just what does it feel like in my body, right? And the more repetitions of practice that, you, that I get, the quicker I can do that the more facility I can have with bringing my awareness to my body, the more fluence I uh, fluency I have with, oh, this is this feeling. This is the name for this feeling. Um, and so those are all important factors of feelings awareness. The other thing is that it allows you to, in practicing on your own, control. Um, you can choose, do, I, do you feel like practicing right now? You can get your feelings list out and choose what feeling you'd like to to practice, right? So control, autonomy, those can be important things in terms of um, making it easier to practice being with either, you know, feelings that are associated with needs being met or probably more likely, uh, you know, some of the uncomfortable feelings, having some autonomy about what, do I, what am I up to, what am I up for today? And some autonomy about being able to stop in, this, in the real-time interaction, uh, you may have more limited options about how it's going to play out and what the other person is going to do. Recalling something that's already happened, I have control over the remote control in my mind and fast forwarding and stopping. I can, I can choose uh, how much I want to continue and uh, what I want to recall and when I want to stop. Okay. So those are some aspects of, of practice. I'm going to put in the chat here some resources. So Jim Mansky offers a tool, um, he, he and Jory and others called The Matrix. And in that feelings awareness is only one of about 25 skills that are capabilities for building uh, you know, a life around nonviolent communication. And so the other thing is it gives a framework in The Matrix you know, for feelings awareness, uh, different levels of proficiency um, and sort of what, where, where you're at. You can, you can go back and revisit the matrix and where am I now? Uh, and it gives you a sense of growth and progress over time. Um, and the other thing, let me just put in some additional resources here, is it's important when doing these practices to have a reference. And so a feelings list or a needs list. And so that can be really helpful. Let me just copy the one more in there. And so when practicing, a feelings list can be really helpful to say, what feeling am I gonna to explore today? And also when sitting with bodily sensations associated with a recollection, it can be helpful to consult the feelings list and say, hmm, let me check out, is that um, uh, upset? Is that impatience? Is it frustration, right? You give, give you some, some, some names to try on for these feelings. So my hope is that this is, was helpful for you and I wanna share my appreciation for your time and your presence and your sharing here today. Maybe let's hear from one or two um, people. What's one thing you're taking away from today? And then we'll close, we'll say our goodbyes and close there. Would anyone like to share one or two things that you're taking away from today? Yeah, I can go Narsi here. Oh, Narsi and then Amalia. Yeah, so one thing I'm taking away is a new dimension of, of empathy. 
that it's, it's just even in celebration and joy, but just being together in the moment, that's a phenomenal insight for me. Uh, uh, I was somehow thinking that empathy is only when somebody is in, going through some challenge or trouble. Uh, although we do, we do acknowledge when somebody is uh, celebrating and joy, we are with them, but the awareness that you are, you are mentioning about it really consolidates my learning today. Thank you. Thank you, Narsi. Um, I, I appreciate you sharing that with everyone. It's good to hear it. Thank you. And Amalia. Hi, everyone again. Sorry, I uh, thank you so much for today. I'm taking a good mood away, but more than that, <laughs> an outstanding mood actually. It was very, very pleasant and I enjoy it. But also, I like um, the lesson that you specify very logic how I can practice recognizing my physical feelings like I don't know how I name correctly and I would like if you have uh, more to say on that because for me and for many of my friends that's one of the most difficult thing not to say logically what you're, you're feeling to feel it actually am I having a tension on my on my shoulder am I having butterflies on my stomach that are the simple one but other than that, do I feel anything? Sometimes I get nervous and I can tell you I feel nothing except five minutes after I'm saying, oh, I was nervous. So I do practice uh, progressive relaxation, which seems to help me recognize by contracting different muscles, recognize something. But are there any other exercise that you can recommend? I remember the one concentrating on your hand or on different parts. Are there any other helpful exercises mm. that you recommend mm, thank you amalia and what i'll do is i'll put in my website link in the chat and if you want to go there and message me i can send you some resources uh in addition to the ones we covered today so thank you uh, robert that's probably the easiest way thank you amalia um, i really appreciate it. thanks yeah and last uh sarah joy and then we'll unmute and say our goodbye sarah joy uh, yeah, thank you, Rob. I, I really appreciated your giving a clear explanation and um, a, a chance to both um, notice our sensations and then to practice actually feeling them. And, and, and having the observer reflect back was really powerful um, and uh, allowed me to see my, myself in a different way. Um, and even feel the feelings a little bit more, you know, because sometimes the words aren't exactly my own words, but hearing them in their words and in my own words was very helpful. So mm. thank you for that. Oh, Sarah Joy, I'm taking in um, the savoring of, of uh, what you shared. And there is something wonderful about doing these practices in a group. Exactly, my experience is similar that when I hear back someone reflect what I, what I shared, there's something about hearing that reflection that deepens it and even clarifies it for me. And, oh, it's that and this other thing. And so uh, it, being in a practice group is so wonderful. So thank you all. It was wonderful being with you. And thanks to Jim and Joy for inviting me here. And let's just unmute and say our goodbyes and thank each other. So thank you. Thank you and bye. Thank you. Enjoy the session. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank Have you a all. good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Goodbye, everybody. That was awesome. <laughs> Goodbye, Liz. Awesome. Oh, I, I appreciate it, Rob, how calm you were. You stayed so present and calm. Thank you. <laughs> AJ, oh. do you have a moment to stay? Stay oh, on? I I oh, can't stay, but I think Rob has to go. Yeah. So I don't yes. think there's an after party today. No after party today, unfortunately. Oh, that's sorry. right. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. Maybe next time. Next time. Mm -hmm. I'll All be right. here next time. Next. Okay. Next, uh, session. I send you a hug, AJ. <laughs> Thank you. Same to you. Bye. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you, Alison. Thank you for your empathy. <laughs> Rob, I will get in touch with you on your website, couplefocus.com. Well, thank you, AJ. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Bye. Nice to meet Bye. you. Bye-bye.
Bye everyone. Bye, bye. Amelia. Bye, Alison. Bye. bye.